What's going on guys, Gaston right here, and in today's video we're going to be testing the image stabilization of the Sony a7C. Now, you're wondering why you're not outside. Well, it is raining really bad and I wanted to do this video, so I'm right here at the studio. I'm going to be walking back and forth to the end of the studio, and we're going to be testing a lens that I have right here, which is not image stabilized, which is the 16 to 35 millimeters f2.8. However, there is another lens that I've been liking way better than the 16 to 35, and that lens is the 24 to 105 f4. Yes, it's not as fast as this lens, but this lens features image stabilization optical. Now, the IBIS of the Sony a7C is, you know, it's pretty decent, but it's nowhere near to where other camera manufacturers are right now. For example, the Canon EOS R5 or the GH5. Now, this one is also a tad worse than the a7 III, which in my opinion is not the best image stabilization either. Um, however, you could do a lot of great things with the embodied image stabilization if that is going to entail you shooting like smooth footage and stuff like that. You know, this is going to perform really well. The problem with the Sony a7C is when you start walking or when you have a much more aggressive uh, motion uh, with a camera and the camera simply cannot handle it. And that's where I start having problems. But everything seems to be improved dramatically when using the 24 to 105 with image stabilization. Now, disclaimer. One of the things that you're going to realize is when you pop a lens with image stabilization here, the image stabilization of the camera, the IBIS, turns off and the only one that drives is the one from the lens. Now, with a lens like this one that doesn't have image stabilization, you can activate image stabilization or deactivate it. Now, a big problem that this camera has, and I think was a huge oversight from Sony, is that this camera doesn't have active image stabilization like the ZV-1, which by the way is the camera that I'm filming with right now, and I'm actually using the onboard microphone, so let me know how this thing sounds. Speaking of microphone in this test, also I'm going to be using the sound from the Sony a7C. I haven't seen a lot of videos covering the sound of this camera, and in my opinion, it's pretty decent. So, once you see me uh, vlogging with the camera, we're going to switch to the audio of the Sony a7C, and what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to dial this lens, at 24 millimeters, and obviously we're gonna dial the 24 to 1, 1 to 5 also at 24 millimeters, because this one is 16 to 35. So I have the lens already dialed at 24. Image stabilization is gonna be turned off. We're gonna walk back and forth, repeat the test with the image stabilization on, and let's see the findings. All right, let me show you right there. We're gonna turn the image stabilization off, and there you go. We're gonna start vlogging. All right, so this is the 16 to 35 millimeters, and right now we have no image stabilization. By the way, the 16 to 35 doesn't have image stabilization either. So we're completely handheld right now, and we're testing for the results and the shakiness. Now, I'm walking normally like anyone would walk. There is a difference. This uh, floor is very level. Probably if you're gonna be outdoor or hiking and stuff like that, that is going to be a little bit more bumpy. So let's do it again. And like I mentioned before, the sound that you're listening right now comes from the Sony a7C, which in my opinion, I think is pretty good. Okay, so go all the way back there. And let's see if this footage is acceptable or not without any image stabilization. So from having the image stabilization on, we're gonna turn it on right now. And let's see the findings. And once again, right now we have image stabilization from the camera. And let me know if this is a little bit better than before. Drop your comments down below. We're gonna do exactly the same thing. Walking all the way back. And now take a look at those lines right there in the background and that's gonna be a good point of reference to tell if you know this IBIS stabilizes the footage or not. Let's do it once again. And holding the camera with one hand by the lens, I don't have any tripod or anything like that. I'm trying to hold the camera as steady as possible. So uh, let's actually check the quality of this footage with the image stabilization turned on completely. What do you guys think? Acceptable or not?
All right, so what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna switch to the 24 to 105 millimeters F4. And remember, that lens has image stabilization. All right, so here we go. Now, the first thing that I wanna show you is that the IBIS is completely turned off. And also, let me show you the setting on the IBIS there. See what it says? That when you use a lens, you have to use the IBIS or the image stabilization from the lens. So uh, the IBIS of the camera gets completely blocked. And here you have it. This is the uh, 24 to 105, we're dialed 24 millimeters. The sound that's coming from right now comes from the camera. And let me know, what do you think? How do you like this footage? Once again, take a look back at those lines right there off the gate. Um, that's a look a little bit stabler than the other one. Stabler or stabilizer? <laughs> let me know, what do you think, guys? We're gonna do that one more time. Again, we have the image stabilization turned off right now. And even if I wanna activate the IBIS, I can't. The moment you put a lens that has image stabilization, the only image stabilization that you're gonna get is the optical from the lens. And once again, check out those lines right there. Is this lens by any mean any better? It should be pretty much the same because I have in-body image stabilization turned off and the IBIS from the lens also is off. All right, so how was that? Next up, we're gonna turn the image stabilization on. And like I mentioned before, you can only do it from the lens. And let's actually repeat the test. And here we are at 24 millimeters. And now we have the 24 to 105 engaged with the optical image stabilization of the lens. I'm a little bit out of focus. What do you guys think? All righty. Let's do that one more time. And remember, take a look at those lines in the back. Take a look at the elements on the back right here, the soft boxes. All right, so take a look at the lines on the back and let me know what do you think when comparing those lines versus uh, the other lens. Again, we have the optical image stabilization engaged only. And like I mentioned before, you cannot use IBIS in this combined, only one. So I think in my opinion, this is the best result out of all the lenses that I've tried and even you know with the image stabilization from the camera. In fact, I found this image stabilization better than the image stabilization than the Sony a7 III. How was that? So this is gonna wrap up the test, guys. You know, in my test that I've done before, the image stabilization of the optical 24 to 105 F4 is way superior than the IBIS. But, you know, you are gonna check the video. You're gonna be able to judge it for yourself. We'd love to hear your comments. Drop your comments down below which one is the one that you like the most. Now remember, if you wanna win this camera, all you have to do is subscribe to this channel, enable notifications, and go follow me on Instagram and Twitter Agaston Shutters. I'll be announcing the winner on Christmas. So guys, see you in the next video. Take care.